a very busy summer has ensued at Roots Hall viewers after that playoff disappointment. We've got plenty of new faces to show you and we kick off the new season against Cambridge. Let's get stuck into it. And here is signing number one then viewers out of 11. Kevin Ramirez has joined us from Alianza over in Peru. He's joined us for £725,000, 20 years of age. He doesn't have a work permit, so he has gone out on loan to Apoel Nicosia over in Cyprus. But what we have seen previously is we loan players out till about January time. They then get a permit and we bring them back. But at 20 years of age, he's currently a two-star ability player and I think he's got a lot of potential here. Good determination at 18 with a driven personality really stood out for me. Passing, I think, will improve as he gets game time. Good first touch already, good technique as well. Decent physically and not bad mentally either. Composure could be a little bit better. But I think Kevin has got the makings of a very good player here. Signed a two-year deal on £2,300 a week. And hopefully we will see him sooner rather than later. Another South American import then viewers is Alberto Palumbo. He signed from a River Plate for £4 million potentially rising to £4.8 million. 20 years of age once again, £6,250 a week on a three-year deal. He plays on that attacking right role, can play up front as well and on the right-hand side of midfield. I think he looks a very good player for us. Acceleration of 17 really stood out. Pace, we can improve that a little bit. Good technique again, good passing, can cross a ball, can dribble with it and he's very good mentally. Again, composure could be a little bit better but I'm sure we can work that out as things progress but I think Alberto who can start as well has got a work permit is going to be a very exciting prospect for us and he's a big money signing so there's a little bit of pressure on him to perform as well another right-sided player has come in who can also play in the center and this is Colin Toll he signed from Barla Town on a free transfer Na 18 years of age £3,700 a week on a three-year deal current ability is three and a half star potential to be a four and a half star player Passing of 16, dribbling of 12, first touch of 11. Again, physically, it could be a little bit better acceleration, but really good stamina and really good mentally for an 18-year-old. I think he's got a very exciting career ahead of him, and I'm hoping that he will make an impact and probably will be one of our starting players on this right-hand side. Although we'd signed Palumbo, I still felt as though Colin, on a free transfer, was a very good player to have and someone that we needed as well. He scored 27 goals in 95 games for Barla. A familiar face has returned to the club on loan. We've gone to Arsenal once again and we have borrowed Nick Grant, who will primarily play in the centre of midfield this year. 21 years of age, three and a half star player, potential to be four and a half star. Look at those physicals of this boy. Look at those physicals. Six foot six, teamwork 18, work rate 20, technique 18. I think he has only improved since he last was here. He got five goals in 36 games for his last time. Can he improve that? We'll find out this season. But I'm very excited to have Nick back on board. Bolivian international Wilson Suarez has joined the club on £8,500 a week on a free transfer from Porto. Six-foot centre-back. Marking and tackling could be a little bit better, but he can also play it on the right and in defensive midfield. If we do want to shake things up a little bit, I think Wilson looks a very good prospect for us. Already valued at £9 million. Potential to be a four-star player. So we'll see how he gets on this season. He made six appearances for Porto as well. So he's got a lot of pedigree about him. Hopefully he'll have a very good season here and we can use him and get the best out of him here. We saw in the playoffs the weakness in the goalkeeping area with Paton and we have addressed that by signing who is going to be our number one for probably a number of years, Shane Waters. He's come on a free transfer once again from Chelsea. Three and a half star player, potential to be a four and a half star on £4,000 a week on a two-year deal. Commanding of the area could be a little bit better, but other than that, I think he looks a very, very exciting player at 23. Two under-21 caps for England as well. Made one appearance for Chelsea, and I'm excited to see what Shane can offer here. I felt as though this, again, was an offer that was too good to turn down for him, and at relatively cheap wages as well. Here is loan signing Miroslav Gulik who's Croatian and come on loan from Fiorentina. £7,750 a week on a one-year loan. Again, plays in that centre midfield. Unbelievable first touch at 17. 
really good team work. Determination of 20. So, he's, again, I think this kid is going to go all the way up to that potential ability of three and a half star. 25 years of age means he's a little bit more mature. He's made 150 appearances in his career and scored 14 goals. And I think it just gives us that little bit of depth that sometimes we missed in the centre midfield last season and a little bit of bite. So, it gives us some more options to just change games around a little bit. Another centre-back here, Harrison Marcelin, has come from Nice on a deal of £1.9 million. £11,500 a week until 2033, so a three-year deal. He is 30 years of age, but a six-foot six, jumping reach of 17, natural fitness of 16, heading of 13. Aggression could be a little bit better, but other than that, I think he is a very good player for us and brings a lot of experience with 275 games under his belt, but that's six-foot six. And 17 jumping, which really stood out. And I'm hoping that, like Theo Marshall, we will be able to use the height to our advantage when going forward. And it will help us at the back as well. And coming on loan from Nice, just to give us another option at centre-back, which is an area we're pretty light in, is Frederick Robin. He's come on loan for the entire season on £4,900 a week. Six foot two, tackling of 16, heading of 12, jumping reach of 16. Again, his key attributes look very good. He looks a very well-rounded player. And I think he will develop into a good player. And again, will primarily be a backup for us, but does give us a lot of cover if we need it. Now, this is a player that came available very late on in the window at the moment. And that was Ruben Felix, who was released by Sporting Lisbon. Currently a three-star player, potential to be four-star Plays again in that centre midfield, so again, just going back to that bite in the midfield, but can play in that attacking role as well. First touch of 13, passing of 14, technique of 15, decision making 16, vision of 16, and works hard as well with a good balance, good acceleration, good pace, and good stamina. I think he'll be a very good player here, Ruben. £6,500 a week is not a lot of money on a two-year deal. And finally, another central midfielder that can again play in the attacking role on the left or in defensive midfield is Alessandro Forrester. I, I think we've signed a lot of central midfielders this time around, but like I said, it was a position last year where we were lacking a little bit of quality and something that could ch come on and change the games. And I feel as though the signings this year we have made will be able to do that. Free transfer from Torino, £9,500 a week on a two-year deal at 24 years of age. Good balance at 16, good acceleration as well. Passing and first touch of 16 really stood out for me as well. So I think he is going to be a really good player for us once again. And I'm looking forward to seeing how he gets on this season. Outgoing wise, we the main player leaving the club as Lionel Osamanu. It probably plays into the fact that we signed a lot of midfielders this year. But £4 million was an offer that we couldn't really turn down for him. And I felt as though sometimes he didn't have the best games. He gave the ball away a lot, which in the midfield is not what we need to be doing. So he's gone to Siver Sport for £4 million. He's done well here. We've made quite a bit of money on him, about £3 million. So I think that was a good deal for the club. A couple of youngsters have left the club as well on loan and permanently. Alexandre Parsemin has gone back to France for £1.1 1 .1 to £1.2 million potentially. Didn't really have the impact we were expecting last season. And I didn't think with Sabroso staying once again that he will be able to play. So we may as well cash in on him and get some money back into the club. Long-term player Lucas Stevenson has left the club as well on a £2 million deal to divisional rivals Ipswich, which could rise to £2.3 million. He played about 22 games in each of the last two seasons. Not had the best games in e either season as well, averaging just over a 6.7. So I think it was time to cash in on Luca and bring in some fresh faces. Feel sorry that he's gone from the club. He has been here a while, but I think it is in the best interest of both him and Southend. Chiquinho has gone out on loan to a third division Portuguese team, Unai de Madeira, on £130,000 we're going to get for him. We tried to sell him, but it just wasn't happening, unfortunately, so a loan move was the best option. And the man in goal who made some mistakes in those playoffs, Gordon Patton, has left. With the emergence of Waters, we've still got Zach Priest here as well, and Billy Krellin. I felt as though we didn't need four keepers. Gordon Patton was the worst of those, so we've sold him to Wigan for £130,000 potentially rising to 160 and after that busy transfer period then viewers that leaves us with eight and a half million pounds in the bank a transfer budget of two million pounds but we are currently ten thousand pounds over spending on the wage budget so we might have to look at balancing that either by reducing the transfer budget or maybe selling another player on 
And season preview wise, then we are predicted to finish 11th in the table. We are going to look at finishing in those top two places. Newcastle and Burnley still kicking about here. Leeds have come down alongside Bristol City and Stoke. So there's going to be plenty of tough challenges for us. But again, I am looking forward to this season. And if we can do anything like we did last year, we're in for a very, very good year. And I feel this squad is better this time around than we were last year. Unfortunately, no players in the Media Dream 11, but we'll keep working at that and one day it will happen. Let's go kick this season off against Cambridge. And here is the start 11 for the first game. Then viewers, Waters is in goal, a back four of Sanchez. Suarez makes his debut alongside Marshall with Mitchell at right back. Leandro and Grant in the middle. Mizuchi is on the right. Miljevic is in behind Sabroso leading line and Toll makes his debut on the right hand side. Looking for a big impact on the squad today and pick up three early points against relegation favourites Cambridge. Here we are then, pre-season is come and gone, it all leads down to this moment. One minute of the game gone already and it is nil-nil. We, for the first time as well since joining here at Southend, we've filled up the 25-man squad quota, which just shows the amount of depth that we have this season. And like I say, I think that will be crucial to us this season because it's not something that we've had for a while. And I think sometimes that didn't help us last season, especially at the end when players and games were coming thick and fast in those playoffs. And it just gives us an opportunity to freshen things up quite a lot and change things about and maybe catch teams out a little bit. I've just noticed on the bench we've got three Zs in a row. Miljevic with the first highlight. Grant, oh, goes close and it's saved by Phillips. But on the bench we've got three Zs in a row with Zapriest, Medley and I, th I can't think of the... Uh, Zoran Pantic. Oh, my word, Leandro, what have you done? So we've got three Zs on the bench and we could be about to go one zip down here to a penalty just before half time. Waters, can he save it? Oh, he goes close. He goes close on his debut, but Tom Holmes puts the ball in the back of the net and it is 1-0 Cambridge and that is not the start that we had in mind here at Roots Hall. Waters is so unlucky. He's gone the right way. Oh, if he would just raised his hands a little bit higher, he would have saved it and that is not the best start to the game. He came from our corner as well. Cambridge broke away and Leandro gave away a silly, silly penalty. We're going to point the fingers and tell the boys that we don't like a team that wants to win and we aren't happy with them. We really, really need to get off to a good start. Although last year we got off to a, a mixed start against a, another poor team, no disrespect to Cambridge or Rochdale, but we got off to a 1-1 one, one draw with them and I thought oh, we were going to struggle and look how we ended up. So you never know what could happen here. We're going to demand some more, though. We've not seen anything in the second half, so it's time for a change. Sabroso has been unusually quiet for him, so we'll bring Palumbo on and see how he can get on. And we'll bring Ruben Felix on for Nick Grant, who's having a 6.4 and having a pretty poor game, as is Mazuc. So we'll bring Miljevic on to the left, and then we'll bring Calvin Warren on in behind and just see if those changes can make any difference to us whatsoever. Big 20 minutes coming up now. Surely we can find a goal. We've not even seen us have one highlight apart from that corner. And nothing has been on target. It's been really, really poor so far. 10 minutes this game to go at Miljevic with the corner now. What we do, oh, and he's gone into Theo Marshall and it's gone close. And it looked like that was going in. Surely we can't start off with a loss this season. Surely we can't start off with a loss. Please don't let this be the marker for the season. It's going to be the marker for the season. Oh, there's a late corner, 94 minutes gone. It's gone to Cambridge, so can we clear it? Miljevic, break, break, come on. Go down the middle, pass into the space here. Warren, he's got, oh, he's got ocean space in front. He took a touch. Oh, I thought that was going to go in the back of the net. I thought the keeper had spilt it, but Sanchez, the highlight continues. Sanchez into Miljevic. Felix, Leandro, come on, he's giving away the penalty. Plays it back, finds Leandro once again. Come on, Warren, into Palumbo. Give it Felix, Warren. I think once these players might get on getting used to each other a little bit things will come this is a nice bit of play though and it would be lovely if it led to a goal but just not being able to ah oh, we couldn't break cambridge down they put so many men behind the ball there and we just couldn't find a way through it looked like we were going to get a goal but that is a disappointing way to kick off the campaign against a newly promoted team to say we just missed out on the premier league last season to lose against a newly promoted team but i think that passage of play at the end just there does give a sign for hope but we need to improve if we're going to do anything this season. But I said that last year, and look how it all finished up. We, we still end up in the championship. But we'll gloss over that. We'll gloss over that. We're going to thrash the arms there and tell the boys we're far from pleased with that, and we will leave it there. That's all we need to say for them. 
because that was not good. Not good at all. Although Felix came off the bench and got a 7, which is pretty impressive. We've got a busy month coming up. We've got another six games of the championship to play. Seven games in total in all competitions in August. But I don't think that we will meet back up now until maybe the, the Ipswich game in October. We'll get dug into the season a little bit more, I think. Where do we go? I think we'll come back for the Ipswich game. They are bottom and we are just above them in 22nd at the moment. So we will come back for that game. They are one of our bogey teams. And hopefully things will have improved a lot since then. If you have enjoyed that video, viewers, please don't forget to smash that like button for me. Share the video around and subscribe to the channel for more content. Let me know down in that comment section below as well who you are most excited about seeing in a Southend shirt and how you think we'll get on this season. Don't forget I am on Twitch tonight as well at 7.30pm with my whole City Save link down in that description below as always. Thank you very, very much for watching and I'll see you again for more next time.